Infective endocarditis is a microbial infection of the heart valves or the mural endocardium that leads to the formation of vegetations composed of thrombotic debris and organisms often associated with the destruction of underlying tissues. So in this definition, this is taken from Robin's pathology and we can see that it is a infective process, microbial infection, any microbe can cause it, many microbes can cause it actually. It is the infection of heart valves or the endocardium and in this case we are going to form vegetations on the valves or on the endocardium that will be composed of thrombotic debris and the organism that have caused the uh, endocarditis or others as well and this will often be associated with the destruction of the tissue that is underneath that vegetation so that was quite easy to understand now coming to the microbial causes of infective endocarditis first of all we need to know that the most common cause of infective uh, endocarditis are extracellular bacteria these bacteria are going to include strep viridans which is the most common cause of infective endocarditis but it is a low virulence organism and it is going to affect only the valves which have been previously damaged. Now this previous damage can occur from uh, rheumatic heart disease or uh, any sort of problem actually. Secondly we have Staph aureus which is responsible in 10 to 20 percent of the cases. It is a highly virulent organism and it can damage even healthy valves. Next we have uh, strep bovis which is going to affect patients with underlying colorectal carcinoma. Enterococci and Hayseg group are another causative agent. Hayseg group includes Haemophilus, Actinobacillus, Cardiobacterium, Echinella and Kingella. Next fungi, Rickettsiae, Chlamydia, Gram negative bacilli and 10% cases are also culture negative. That means that when you uh, do the blood culture it will come off as negative. Now the fact that this culture is negative that can be because of antibiotic therapy, because of a difficulty in isolating the agent or because uh, the organisms will be deeply located in the uh, vegetation. So um, it will not be readily released into the blood and because you're doing blood culture uh, that will not be evident from that. Now we have many predisposing factors which will pave the way for uh, infective endocarditis. What these predisposing factors do is that they seed the blood with microbes that is they will uh, form a way for microbes to enter the blood. First of all we'll, we can have an infection elsewhere in the body. Secondly we can have a dental or surgical procedure which will cause transient entry of bacteria into the blood. We can have IV drug abusers uh, who will inject uh, maybe dirty needles and uh, that can introduce bacteria into the blood and um, since there is a intravenous drug abuse and the venous uh, blood first of all comes into the right atria so the tricuspid valve will be the most effective most commonly affected um, next we can get bacteria from the gut or the oral cavity and also trivial injuries throughout the body now we have two types of uh, endocarditis actually one is acute and the other is subacute. The acute endocarditis is caused by a highly virulent organism which will attack healthy valves as we have discussed before and in this case we can have substantial mortality and morbidity even with appropriate antibiotic therapy or surgery. While secondly in subacute endocarditis this is a slow process and in this case the organism which will cause it will have low virulence and it is always going to affect a previously damaged or disease or a scarred valve so uh, and in this case the patient will recover after an appropriate antibiotic therapy uh, and one way to distinguish between these two is that the acute endocarditis lesions will not have any granulation tissue but in subacute endocarditis we will see granulation tissue at their basis uh, the vegetations that are growing on the uh, valves or in the endocardium and that will show that healing is taking place so uh, that is one point that can help differentiate between the two
so morphologically what happens is that the vegetations that are growing on the valves either or on the endocardium are going to be friable that is they can be they can be broken down easily they'll be bulky and these um, vegetations are potentially destructive okay so uh, because they can invade the uh, underlying endocardium or valve and uh, cause inflammation and then subsequently fibrosis etc but uh, what they contain is inflammatory cells and microorganisms that are responsible uh, for the vegetation to develop in the first place most commonly the aortic and mitral valves are affected but as i said before that in iv drug abuse most commonly tricuspid is affected because that's the first valve that uh, the venous blood sees um, and these vegetations that are present on the endocardium or the valve can erode the, uh, the the surface that is underneath it and cause abscess formation which is called a ring abscess these uh, vegetations can also shed and form emboli uh, and what happens is that and these emboli can go and get stuck in in end arteries or anywhere causing septic infarcts because the tissue that will that is going to die is also going to be septic because of the uh, because of the microorganisms that are present in the vegetations that have been dislodged and then causes infarct in some other area now similarly these emboli can get stuck uh, and cause uh, inflammation in the arterial wall in the arterial wall it they, when they cause inflammation they can weaken the wall and cause uh, ballooning of the uh, vessel wall leading to the formation of aneurysms and these aneurysms will be known as mycotic aneurysms okay the clinical features of infective endocarditis includes fever most commonly this is the most consistent sign in the acute form because uh, we have bacteremia in that case but in the subacute form either we do not have uh, bacteremia because that is more chronic and slow process or the microorganisms are very deeply situated in the vegetation so they do not actually um, go into the blood that often so we can detect them or um, or the body can detect them and cause fever secondly we can have murmurs because uh, of course these um, these lesions are going to be present on the valves and uh, if they cause um, they can cause acute problems or chronic problems depending upon what they are doing to the valve and we know that when there are valve problems we get to hear murmurs on auscultation now uh, one important thing that we mentioned uh, before is that one complication of these uh, vegetations is that they will dislodge from there and go and uh, form microemboli and get stuck and uh, and get stuck elsewhere in the body so we have four characteristic signs for infective endocarditis which is Janeway lesions Janeway lesions are actually these are erythematous non-tender lesions on palms and soles secondly we have um, tender lesions on the uh, fingers and toes these are called osler's nodes we have splinter hemorrhages which are hemorrhages in the nail beds and uh, lastly we have roth spots which are hemorrhages in the retinal uh, in the retina so these four uh, characteristic signs are due to microemboli dislodging in the lab findings we will find signs for anemia of chronic disease this will be discussed in detail in the rbc pathology the diagnosis of uh, infective endocarditis is confirmed by a positive blood culture for the causative organism we can also do it by a transesophageal echocardiogram and also as i said before anemia of chronic disease regarding the complications of infective endocarditis because it is an infectious process the immune system is going to react and antigen antibody complex can get trapped in the glomeruli and that will uh, cause glomerulonephritis so in that case we can have hematuria that is blood in the urine albumin in the urine and ultimately renal failure glomerulonephritis is the most important complication of infective endocarditis now lastly before ending the topic let's see some causes of non-infected vegetations on the endocardium or the uh, valves so first of all we have non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis so the name states that it is not in going to include bacteria it is thrombotic and it is inflammation of the endocardium so 
It is deposition of sterile thrombi on cardiac valves due to a hypercoagulable state. Hypercoagulable state is that state in which the blood is prone to develop thrombi on its own. So it is easy for uh, the blood to form clots inside it. That will occur due to uh, chronic DIC, hyperestrogenic states. These are all hypercoagulable states or also in case of carcinomas such as adenocarcinomas uh, in which we have increased amounts of circulating mucin which also makes the blood uh, hypercoagulable. So in this case if we have uh, hypercoagulable states we are going to have increased formation of thrombi and these thrombi are going to go around in the blood and get stuck and deposited on the valves or in the endocardium and um, and start an inflammatory process so these are going to be sterile this is not an infective process now one thing to remember is that these lesions are not uh, destructive as compared to those vegetations which were caused by bacteria and other uh, microbial agents these are going to be small and um, generally for these lesions to occur valvular damage is not a prerequisite as we discussed previously in subacute endocarditis the real problem in this case is not damage to the endocardium or something. The real problem is the formation of emboli because these vegetations are actually thrombi and they can embolize. And uh, secondly, these can serve as a potential nidus for infective endocarditis. So if a circulating um, bacteria sees this uh, lesion, uh, he'll be very happy to find it because it will be a ready-made home for it to proliferate and convert this non-bacterial endocarditis into infective endocarditis. So lastly we have the endocarditis that occurs in systemic lupus erythematosus which is an autoimmune disorder. This endocarditis is also known as Libman Sachs endocarditis. In this case we have sterile vegetations, no microbes on the valves of patients with SLE in 10% of the patients. In this case, uh, the etiology is immune complex deposition and thus it will lead to inflammation and fibronecrosis, fibrosis and serious deformities of walls. These uh, deformities are going to resemble the lesions which are, um, which are present in chronic rheumatic heart disease. This is also an autoimmune process. Similar lesions can occur in antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Now in this case, uh, the body is going to produce antiphospholipid antibodies which will um, attack the endocardial cell, cell membranes and thus pave the way for clot formation. That's all about infective endocarditis.